Just a, an update on uh, screening for uh, prostate cancer. I'm sure everyone can remember that we started out by basically screening all men at the age of 50 with a PSA, a rectal exam, and then a systematic biopsy. We didn't have imaging. We didn't have micro ultrasound or MRI. Then we quickly moved to selected men at a younger age, uh, followed by systematic biopsy. And these are how we should select the men for early screening, uh, African ancestry, strong family history, certain known gene abnormalities. And the one thing that's coming on, but it's taking it longer than I would have hoped, these uh, abnormal polygenic risk scores are looking at various SNPs. And, and I show this slide because it, you know, these individual genes that we all know cause prostate cancer only affect a tiny proportion of the population at large. But if you have a genomic risk score, this is in the highest quartile. Look, at least that's 2.5% uh, of the population. This is an intermediate risk score affecting 25% of the population. And that's even more, uh, more of the people you see uh, than would have a positive family history. So uh, I think there's a number of these tests out there, but the next big boost, I think, to the way we screen will come in this uh, region of uh, polygenomic uh, risk scores. This is uh, some data from uh, the much maligned uh, PLCO cancer screening trial uh, looking at who should be rescreened aggressively. If your baseline PSA and PLCO was less than one, at 12 and a half years, only about 2% of the population developed a clinically significant cancer. So these men don't need to be screened annually. They don't need to uh, have a whole lot to uh, worry about. Now, the other thing that I think ought to change, and, and it has a little bit in the AUA guidelines, is this question, is the digital rectal exam necessary? This was a nice uh, meta-analysis earlier this year in European urology. They looked at all the big screening trials, PLCO in the US, the ERSPC, uh, CAP uh, study in the UK, PROTECT, et cetera, et cetera. Hard to see, but the bottom line from the conclusion of the abstract, DRE exhibits notably low diagnostic value. In the absence of clinical symptoms and signs, DRE could be omitted from prostate cancer screening. Now, in Germany, they're doing a study uh, of young men who are invited for screening. This is called the ProBase study. And, and they're invited to have both a DRE and a PSA or a PSA alone. alone. Now look at this, 37% of men accepted the digital rectal exam. Turn that around, 60-some percent <laughs> didn't want it. Uh, the DRE was suspicious only in 1% of the population. Of the 1%, 57 men, only three of those men were found to have prostate cancer, and actually they were all low grade. I think we got to get to the point where we're omitting the digital rectal exam. Uh, we talked about uh, going from systematic biopsy to a combination of targeted and systematic. And um, I think the, the latest and the biggest point of uh, improving what we now do with screening, I think, is going to be this bullet here, PSA followed by a biomarker followed by a contingent MRI or some form of imaging, and then a target-only uh, biopsy. And, and I sort of derive that by looking at some of the comments in the NCCN guidelines. So uh, they list these, uh, guideline, these um, uh, biomarkers as appropriate to help decide if a biopsy is necessary. And, and in the latest version, they say no single biomarker test could be recommended over any other at this time. Again, published uh, late 2023, uh, the meta-analysis of uh, all the biomarkers, PCA3, 4K, PHI, SELECT, XODX, you can read them all for yourself, showing a lot of similarities. 4K sticks out with the highest negative predictive value. It had the highest point estimate for overall diagnostic odds ratio. Again, tons of data in there in the interest of time. Go back to the conclusion of the abstract, 4K had the highest diagnostic performance, 4K had the highest sensitivity, PHI had the highest specificity for detecting clinically significant cancer. So that uh, open statement that no biomarker 
could be recommended, may be modified in, uh, in the upcoming years. The second part of the comments that I think are intriguing, how uh, the optimal order of a biomarker test versus an imaging test is unknown. However, several more recent studies suggest that upfront biomarker testing with a conditional MRI may be an efficient way to assess those with an elevated PSA. And they have three or four retrospective studies. I picked out uh, the largest study uh, that was published in 2021. This was from UCSF, populate, large population, I forget exactly how many. All men got a 4K, an EXO, an MRI, and a biopsy. And, and then they looked at uh, quite a number, eight different algorithms and many different ways of analyzing these data. But notice that right at the top of the list, a four, an elevated 4K of 7.5, followed by an MRI, followed by a biopsy, if the MRI was suspicious or the PSA density was high, didn't miss any clinically significant cancers, and it avoided like 39% of the MRIs. Very cost-efficient uh, way to do that. And, and I singled that out because we now have a prospective evaluation of this trial. So this is the ProScreen study, which is uh, being done in Scandinavia. This is the first round of screening. 61,000 men randomized to either conventional screening, which is MRI followed by biopsy. 15,000 were randomized to this novel form of screening. It gets complicated there, but they provided this simplified app, uh, schematic. So for 1,000 men who underwent the new form of screening, about 10% of the men, 97, had an elevated PSA. Those men got a 4K score. Two-thirds of them, 68, had an elevated 4K score. Only those men got an MRI. 26 of the men had a pyrats, three, four, or five. Eight of the men had an elevated density. So only 34 men get biopsy, 3.4% of the population. So remember, only 6.8% of the population gets an MRI. Only 3.4% of the population gets biopsied. And what did they find? 17 high-grade cancers and four low-grade cancers. So they find many more high-grade cancers and low-grade cancers. How does that compare? Well, in the conventional screening arm, where on the order of 90% of the men got an MRI and about 11% of the patients got biopsied, only 0.62% were found to have a clinically significant cancer, whereas in the novel screening, only 6.8% of the men get an MRI. Only 3.4% of the men get a biopsy. You find nearly three times as many clinically significant cancers. So I think that's pretty powerful uh, and efficient way to start screening and to kick MRI down the road. Um, now, uh, there is a second Scandinavian study, this one in Gothenburg, very similar diagnose, a very similar strategy. Again, uh, when they wrote the protocol, they used the 4K cut point of 7.5, but they adapted it along the way. If you dug into the supplementary table of that uh, screening trial, they used what we use in the U.S., a cutoff of 5, and they found the exact same thing. You know, you avoid uh, a lot of MRIs, you avoid a lot of biopsies, and they did not miss any of the clinically significant cancers. I, I hate uh, trashing MRI, but I think we all know MRI misses tons and tons of uh, cancer. I'm going to skip that. Uh, what's, what's circulating around now is this idea that uh, MRI invisible tumors may not be clinically significant. And this was uh, a concept first raised in 2019, and I'm sorry Rob Ryder's name isn't on this because this is his paper. And he, he came up with this uh, phrase of a nimbosis, like a cloud, or it's hazy and, and uh, uninterpretable. But uh, just uh, about a month ago, at, at, a, at a different meeting, Lori Klotz, uh, who's also written separately about MRI visible versus invisible, looked at his active surveillance population. And uh, you can see, of the MRI invisible men followed out here <laughs> to 20 years, just a small proportion of them 
uh, had uh, Gleason grade progression. On the other hand, uh, men whose cancers were, were visible, and these are the pirates, fours and fives, basically 80% of them had, had grade uh, worsening, and, and these are the pirates, threes in the middle. Now, he said at that time this was uh, submitted for publication, had not been published. Yeah, I've got his permission to present it. Uh, but uh, it sort of does support the concept that maybe MRI invisible tumors uh, don't even matter. This is a separate uh, study that I thought I put in there that looked at men who are considering active surveillance. If they have a um, MRI uh, that doesn't show a significant lesion, uh, they, they probably don't need a confirmatory biopsy because it's it's only going to uh, raise their Gleason score in a small percentage of cases, whereas if the MRI is uh, uh, suspicious, uh, a, a larger proportion were found to have uh, up, up Gleason grading uh, right at the, uh, at the get go. Uh, the final thing uh, I added here, uh, well, is maybe it's not here, is this. Maybe we don't even need to do biopsies. So, so here is a study of uh, net uh, 57 patients who had an elevated PSA. They had pyrad 4 or 5 on the MRI. They had suspicious PSMA uh, PET scan in the same part of the prostate. And you can see what happened. You know, 1.8% of the patients who had a radical prostatectomy had a uh, Gleason 6. Uh, a quarter of them had uh, 3 plus 4, and you can... You can see what the other patients had here. Uh, with artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, and whatnot, we may be getting a lot more out of our imaging. And just to go back to uh, micro ultrasound, the other talk, that's something that's going on right now, is, is to overlay uh, with a, uh, a machine learning of the real-time ultrasound a color, if that's either red or orange or green if, if that region of the prostate is suspicious or not suspicious or of intermediate suspicion. So we may, may get to the point one day where we don't need a biopsy. I don't think we're there uh, quite now, but I think we should um, you know, keep our eye on it. Prostate cancer screening, we need to do it right. Aggressively screen those who need it. We know now who, family, history, race, genetic abnormalities, uh, polygenomic risk scores that are elevated, abnormal PSA should not result in an automatic biopsy. I feel biomarkers with a contingent MRI may be preferred. I prefer the 4K. I have the most experience with that, and I'm delighted to say the prospective studies uh, have used that. Uh, and if you're going to do a biopsy, do a quality biopsy, whether it's uh, image-guided or, or uh, whatever... Uh, transperineal uh, mapping biopsy you, you, you would do if there's no imaging. So having said that, uh, thanks for your attention.